Hey everybody, Josh from Populi here. Let's delve into the degree audit together, shall we? The degree audit allows you to define the requirements a student must complete in order to receive a degree. Those are GPA and total credits earned requirements, and then also course requirements more specific to that degree. Then you're able to view the student's completed coursework against those requirements so you can judge what they have completed and what they have left to complete. The degree audit shows up on a student's profile, so we'll get to a student's profile by clicking on search and then typing in a name and then selecting the result from that list of results. And then that lands us on the student's profile. We are looking at this from an academic admin role perspective, but if you had the registrar role, you would see the same thing. Once we're on the student's profile, we can click on student and then down to degree audit. And that lands us on the degree audit there. Isn't that nice? One thing to point out here, the school has to have a degree audit created for a degree in order to have anything populate here. In order to view a degree audit, you have to have a degree audit. Sorry, we're sticklers. And then to get really meaningful information for an individual student, a student would typically have to have a degree applied on their profile, which you would see right over here. Technically, you can evaluate a student according to any degree audit for any degree you have set up, even if the student doesn't have a degree. At the top of the degree audit, right up here, you have the degree selector. If the student already has a degree set, they'll default to show that degree there under their name and their degrees right there but you can select any other degree here to see how the student stacks up against that one. You can set the catalog year the same way. This defaults to the student's catalog year on their degree, as we can see right there, but you can judge their work against another catalog year as well. We don't have any specializations for this student, so that doesn't populate automatically, but you could select that specialization there to see how this student's doing in terms of another major or minor or something like that. Let's look at general degree requirements right down here. And you can see at the top here that these are not satisfied. But if you look down, you can see a couple of little check marks here. Looks like some things are satisfied. What's going on? Well, if I flip back to another degree, you can see that for these requirements, the student has satisfied them. So it's satisfied everything there, and then we've got four check marks running right down there. That looks great. Let's go back to the student's actual degree though, so we can go down each of these requirements and see what's going on and where this student stands. This student has a high enough GPA to graduate in terms of the cumulative GPA, which doesn't include potential transfer credits, and then the overall GPA, which does include transfer credits. Then down on credit requirements, we can see that this is where the student has work to do, just completing the number of credits to graduate. The numerator is the number of credits earned. The denominator is the number required. Again, no transfer credits, so no difference between the earned credits here. But you can see on the right that there are differences because the requirements for each of these categories is different. Cumulative credits include transfer credits, so this is the total number of credits for the degree here. Resident credits define the number of credits that must be granted by the institution. And then we can see how many in-progress credits the student has going. In-progress credits are not included in the total number of earned credits up here, so this 29 does not include these eight credits down here. Let's move down to degree course requirements. Obviously, this is where you can see what a student's completed in each of these course groups. At the top, we're seeing that the student overall still has courses required to complete 
in one or more of the course groups. But we can hop back over to that other degree using the degree selector up here and see how it looks when course requirements have been satisfied. There we get that satisfied up at the top and then we can browse through these real quick and see that everything's been satisfied on that course. Wow, looks fantastic. Going back to the student's actual degree, let's look at this first course group. It requires 12 completed credits and this student has completed 12 credits. It requires that for the courses listed in this course group, the student have at least a 2.0 and the student has well over that GPA for these courses. So both of these requirements here have been met. And then as you can see here, we also have a minimum grade point requirement that is different than that GPA requirement. And what that means is that if a student takes a course that matches one of those listed on this gr course group down below, but they receive a grade that grants fewer points than this requirement, that course will not be able to apply against this group. So if a student gets a C minus, which in this case grants grade points of fewer than 1.75, it can't satisfy requirements on this course group. That course would still be included in this overall credit count up here. So it would still count towards the general degree requirements up top. On this first course group, you can see that we also have these show options here. We default to completed. So we're only showing courses listed in this course group that the student has completed, but we can change this to show all courses in this group or those that haven't been completed at all. All of the courses in this course group have been completed. So let's skip down to the third course group where there's only one completed course. If we click on all, we can see these courses left over. And then we can also click over to not completed and it shows those additional courses there. So the idea here is that you can easily see what coursework the students completed, but then you can easily see what they still have left to complete in terms of credits and courses that they would take to fulfill the requirements for each course group. This is a great tool if you're advising a student about courses that they ought to take in an upcoming term. You can come here and you can point out courses that they should take that will complete their specific requirements and then they can look to enroll those in an upcoming term. Okay, let's look at a situation where you can choose which of these course groups you want to apply a specific course against. You'll notice that this Shakespeare course is included in both of these course groups. It's automatically applied against the first course group and that's because the first course group requires 12 credits, but without this course, the student has only fulfilled nine. The second course group already has all 12 credits fulfilled, so Populi can see that and places that Shakespeare course where the credits are needed the most. However, you can override that default decision. So if you decide that the course should apply down on the second group here, you can tick the box there and it'll apply. Let's have a look at the two last course groups here. For third, you can see that there's a substitution applied. And for fourth, we can see an exception. We have substitutions, waivers, exclusions, and exceptions that can affect the requirements for course groups and what you can actually apply there. On the third course group, we see that the student is receiving credit for English 321, but the student has not actually taken that course. You can see here on the status column that these three credits are being fulfilled by ENG 311. We can scroll down to the bottom here and see that substitution with the required course and then the substituted course and all that. Any notes maybe that you've added about why this has been done. You could click add to pop in another substitution or use the pencil icon to edit this one. Scrolling back up, the fourth course group shows an exception applied there. And it's a little harder to tell just by looking at that what's been affected. This course group actually requires 12 credits as it's been set up, 
but it's only showing a 10 credit requirement. If we scroll down to the bottom here, look at exceptions down at the bottom, we'll see that there's an exception there that, that's applying against that course group. And that includes a note about the justification for such a change to requirements. One last thing to point out here, unused courses. These will be courses that are not being used to fulfill any specific course requirements. This course here isn't included in any of the course groups up above, so it can't apply against anything specific. However, the two credits from this course do apply up at the top under general degree requirements, under the cumulative credits and the resident credits there. Schwow, the degree audit. Wasn't that lovely? We have another video about setting up the degree audit, if that interests you, and some documentation about that. You can find those down in the description. Do you want to dig deeper and get more value out of Populi for your school? Join our Discord server. It's where Populi users can ask each other questions and capitalize on community knowledge. If you want to become a part of that community, go to Help in Populi and choose Join the User Community. That'll take you to a spot that has instructions about how you can get set up. I've been Josh for Populi, and you've been great. Thanks for watching.